Okay, in this video I'm going to go over the uh, molarity of stoichiometry and ionic equations homework. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the uh, quiz. So on the quiz, it's going to be all these topics. These two are covered on this worksheet. Make sure you know ideal gas law. Make sure you know R. Um, for acids, know your Arrhenius bronsolari definitions. Know the ideas of strong versus weak acids. Know conjugate acids bases and naming acids. Okay, let's go into the worksheet. So, number one, we have a student mixing aqueous solutions of 1.20 molar sodium phosphide with 0 0.500 molar copper 2 nitrate to produce solid copper 2 phosphide and aqueous sodium nitrate. Balanced equation including state symbols. Okay, so again, this comes down to naming. You need to be able to name everything. Uh, sodium phosphide is this, aqueous, plus copper 2 nitrate. Yields copper to phosphide. Plus sodium nitrate. Okay. Aqueous. All right. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to start with my. I'm trying to look ahead. Three of these. Let me start with my coppers. Three coppers, three coppers. This gives me six nitrates. Six nitrates gives me six sodiums. Six sodiums gives me two phosphoruses, two phosphoruses. So we're good. Two to three to one to six, okay? Well, we don't need that yet, but that's my balanced equation with state symbols. Oops. Okay, letter B, total ionic equation. So what we do with a total ionic equation is we break down everything that's aqueous into its ions, leave the solid together, and you have to make sure that you include the charges and the state symbols and the coefficients. A lot of people miss that on the precipitate lab. So for this, I have two Na3s, but I'm not going to write like, I'm not going to do this, okay? Sodium is, the sodium ion is going to break up into its own sodium ion. So if I had two, three here and two of them, I have six. Six sodium plus aqueous ions. Two phosphorus ions, which is P3 minus, again, aqueous, plus three copper ions. And the charge on the copper has to be two plus aqueous. 3 times 2 is 6 nitrates with a minus aqueous yields. This is my solids going to stay together. Cu3, P2, solid, 6 sodiums, Na plus aqueous, plus 6 nitrates, minus. Okay? So again, don't get lazy with your state symbols. Don't get lazy with the coefficients or the charges. Everything has to be there. That's my total. For the net ionic equation, you're going to find anything that is repeated, and you're going to get rid of it. Or just kind of a simple way to do this. You probably noticed this on the precipitate lab. Anything that's still aqueous at the end, you're going to get rid of. So we form copper to phosphide, but these are still aqueous. So we're going to rewrite this as... And again, keep the same charges and coefficients. Two phosphate ions, aqueous, plus three copper two plus ions, aqueous, yield copper three phosphide solid. Okay? And again, the numbers have to balance out. Two phosphorus ions, three copper ions, Cu3P2. Number four, identify the spectator ions. Spectator ions are just whatever uh, was aqueous before and aqueous after. Sodium ion, nitrate ion. Those are my two spectators. Okay, letter E says if you use 25.0 milliliters of the sodium phosphide, how many moles went into the reaction? Let me erase this for now. Pause it if you need this because it's going away. All right. Uh, so we know the molarity, it says it up in the problem, sodium phosphide, 1.20 molar. 
We know the molarity of the other one too. Copper 2 nitrate is 0 0.500 molar. So if you use 25 milliliters of this, how many moles went into it? Well, molarity equals moles per liter. Uh, 1.20 equals moles per for liter. It's going to be 25 milliliters, so 0 0.025. And again, if you can't do that quickly in your head, just do it out, you know, 25 milliliters times 1 liter over 1,000 milliliters. It takes you 5 extra seconds, but it could save you lots and lots of points. Uh, anyway, we do this out by saying 1.20 times 0 0.025 gives us 0 0.03 moles. But again, with sig figs, uh, let me double check here. Uh, this should be an extra zero here because you see 25.0. Three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. 0 0.0300 moles. Okay, letter F, continuing. How many moles of copper 2 nitrate must he use for a perfect stoichiometric reaction? Well, if we had 0 0.0300 moles of this, how many moles of this do we need? Okay, again, you can just, you know, do this like that, or you can even just say, well, it's a 2 to 3, so let me multiply that by 1.5 times. I can even recognize right now. Uh, it's going to be times 1.5 is going to give me 0 0.0450 moles of copper 2 nitrate. Okay, and again, don't want to do that in your head, just do this, you know, 3 times 0 0.03 divided by 2 gives you the same answer. But again, we're looking at the mole ratio. Uh, letter G. How many milliliters of the copper 2 nitrate must he use to achieve this? Well, we need this many moles. We know this is a concentration. Plug it in. Molarity equals moles per liter. 0 0.500, that's my molarity, equals moles per liter. Solve for L. So again, I always say take this in two steps. Don't just be like, eh, do I multiply, do I divide? Take it in two steps. Multiply both sides by L to get L out of this denominator. So times L, times L, cancel. So we get 0 0.500 times L equals 0 0.45. Extra zero here. When 0 0.450, now we can easily solve for L. 0 0.500, oops, I should say 0 0.0450 divided by 0.5 or times 2 gives me 0 0.9, uh, 0.09, excuse me. Okay, but with the appropriate three sig figs, add two extra zeros, and that is liters. So 0 0.0900 liters, or you can write that as 90.0 milliliters. And that is question one. Okay, question two. Hydrochloric acid is produced by pumping gaseous HCl into distilled water. If 50.0 mil uh, liters of pure HCl gas is pumped into 10.0 liters of water, what is the molarity of the HCl aqueous produced? Uh, all right, so a molarity problem so we know that this is 10.0 liters, <clears throat> we aren't, and by the way, careful that you use the right one here, it's 50.0 liters of gas and 10 liters of water. Uh, we're not given moles, we're not given grams either, and we're trying to solve for molarity. So how are we going to solve for moles here? How can we solve for moles? It's a mystery. Well, fortunately, we know that this happens at STP. And the shortcut we can use, uh, by the way, we know it's at SP because it's 0 degrees Celsius and 760 Tor. Uh, so we can use at STP 1 mole of any gas equals 22.4 liters. So if I have 
50.0 liters times one mole per 22.4 liters, 50 over 22.4, 2.23 moles. That's how many moles I have. Molarity equals moles per liter, 2.23 over 10. So 0 0.223 uh, mole. Other way you could solve this one, if you forgot this shortcut, you could plug everything into the ideal gas law. So it would be PV equals NRT. You're solving for N, so N equals PV over RT. Pressure, uh, which has to be in ATM. Volume, which has to be in liters. R, which we should know. Temperature has to be in uh, Kelvin. You would get the same answer. Okay, that's how we do number two. Number three. Okay, in the white lab, we mix sodium carbonate with calcium chloride and form chalk. Using a balanced equation, write the state symbols, or write a balanced equation with state symbols. Uh, Na2CO3 aqueous plus CaCl2 aqueous yields CaCO3 solid plus 2 NaCl aqueous. I'll just have that memorized. Uh, good. Total ionic equation. Split up the aqueous. Uh, keep the solid together. 2 Na plus aqueous plus CO3 2 minus aqueous plus Ca2 plus aqueous plus 2 Cl minus aqueous yields CaCO3 solid plus 2Na plus aqueous plus 2Cl minus aqueous. Don't forget your charges, don't forget your state symbols, and especially don't forget these numbers. They have to be there. Uh, net ionic equation. Erase anything that's repeated. So we're left over with salt, or I should say sodium and chloride. Get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that. Nyanic equation, right here. Calcium plus carbonate yields calcium carbonate. Uh, identify the spectator ions, it's what we got rid of. Na plus and uh, Cl minus. Uh, letter E, here's the real problem here. If 29.2 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar sodium carbonate is needed to completely react with 90.0 milliliters of calcium chloride, what must the molarity of the calcium chloride solution be? All right, let's uh, get to work. I'm going to start by rewriting my mole ratio. I like to write my molarities up top, so 0.250 molar, x molar, that's what we're trying to solve for, okay? So what we have to basically find out is how many moles of this we're putting in, how many moles of this we need, once we get moles, uh, it tells you 90 milliliters, that's your volume. Uh, so that will be the molarity. Okay, uh, here we go. 29.2 milliliters of 0.250 molar. Molarity equals moles per liter. Uh, 0.250 equals moles per. 29.2 milliliters is 0 0.0292 liters. Okay, I can just erase the unit there. Let's see what we get. 0 0.0292 times 0.250 is 0 0.0073 moles. And that's moles of sodium carbonate. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, let me check my sig figs. Three sig figs. Don't forget the zero. Okay. Uh, so therefore, how many moles of this must I need? Easy. One to one. 0 0.00730 moles. Okay. So if I need this many moles, and I know from the problem that you it came to 90 milliliters, I can solve for x. Okay. Molarity equals moles per liter. We're solving for molarity equals 0 0.00730 divided by liters, 0 0.09 uh, liters. All that nice zeros. Equals 0 0.0811 molar. You can answer in capital M or moles per liter. Okay, so that is the molarity of this. That is the last problem.